Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there's been a battle going on for not just generations, not just for centuries, but for eons, right? It's the battle between substance and style, right? Now, looking at this battle between former WBA welterweight champion Luis Colazzo, and let's be clear here, Galazzo is not just world class, he's a guy who held the belt in the welterweight division way back in 2005, right? This is a battle between Luis Galazzo and a relative newcomer to 147, but a dynamic former champion at 140 and a silver medalist in the Olympics, Amir Khan. Now, how do I put this? And keep in mind, image is what it is. But some would argue that Luis Colasso, who right now is a 4-1 to underdog in this bout, believe it or not, that Luis Colasso is steak without the steak sauce. Right? This guy is meat and potatoes. Right? Some may also argue that Amir Khan is steak sauce without the steak. Right? In my opinion, the flashier Amir Khan, right? Uh, view Colazzo like you would view Matt Damon as Jason Bourne in The Bourne Identity. Right? Doesn't know who he is. The people around him don't know who he is. He's wearing street clothes. As the film progresses, he figures out who he is. And we, the audience, figure out that he has really high-class espionage skills. Right? That's Luis Galazzo. Amir Khan is more like Sean Connery in the gold standard of Bond films, Goldfinger, right? Where you see a duck going across a lake at the very beginning of it. Of course, up pops the duck from the water. It's actually Sean Connery wearing a wetsuit, right? Duck's on his head. He takes off the wetsuit. He's wearing a full-blown tuxedo. He goes and plants explosives. Then, of course, where does he go? He goes to the club, he looks at his Rolex, of course it's a Rolex, the explosives explode, his crime guy says, hey, the plane will be ready to have you leave the island in an hour, and Connery says, okay, great, I'll make it there, but first I have a pit stop to make, and of course, what's the pit stop? It's a liaison with a beautiful woman who, of course, tries to get him killed. Right? The point is simply, style-wise, these guys couldn't be different. Couldn't be more different. Right? Luis Colazzo is the pitcher without the 95-mile-an-hour fastball, or the drop-off-the-table curve, or the Greg Maddox circle change, who somehow gets you out by being able to work the inside part of the plate. He is a premier inside fighter. His skills are subtle. As you watch him, even against Andre Berto, in a highly questionable fight that needs to be re-examined, right, by all of us as unofficial scorers. You'll notice as you look at a film of that fight that while Berto is the more explosive puncher, while Berto's game is more readily accessible to casual fans, 
you'll notice that Luis Colazzo is inside and he's doing work. Quite frankly, he's outworking Andre Berto. Colazzo is a southpaw. His left hand to the body is sneaky and it's beautiful, right? This is a guy who doesn't have dazzling hand speed, but who, when he's in the pocket, when he's right in front of you, can outthink you and can out execute you inside, right? He also is a guy who has a lot of savvy. Just like Tom Brady, the quarterback for the New England Patriots, might not be the quickest of foot, but can slide in the pocket just long enough to freeze the pass rusher so he could throw the ball downfield to Rob Gronkowski or whoever. Luis Colazzo with an economy of movement, right? When the going gets tough, he can move just enough in the pocket to buy himself some time to retool, right? He's a fighter's fighter. The problem is, as you watch him, guys with more dazzling showmanship, right? The showmen of the sport with the faster hand speed are going to look better than him. So, an argument can be made. Andre Berto lost his fight to Luis Galazzo. Right? If you look online and you look at the commentary from when the fight took place, you're going to see that many people here online scored that fight for Colazzo. What's not in dispute is that Colazzo landed many more shots than Andre Berto toward the end of that fight. What is not in dispute is that Harold Letterman scored that fight as it happened 115-112 to Colazzo. Right? What's not in dispute is that before either the 11th or 12th rounds, Berto's dad yells at Berto's corner that Berto needed a knockout to win the fight. Even Berto's dad thought his son was in trouble. Now, two of the three judges had Berto winning the fight by a round, right? The third judge had Berto winning the fight by a few rounds. Berto officially won that fight by unanimous decision. But, you know, boxing's in the eye of the beholder, right? I believe Colazzo has the same problem Mauricio Herrera has. Highly skilled with a subtlety to his game. I believe that if I were to go around and ask a lot of trainers who won that Berto Colazzo fight, many of them would say Luis Colazzo because they're looking at the punches landed. They're looking at the quality of the punches landed, right? They're looking at how Berto threw, excuse me, how Colazzo threw positioning, you know, setting up how the guys engage was able to neutralize a lot of Berto's explosive punching power. And of course, they're looking at how that left to the body. By the way, obviously the Ortiz people know well, Colazzo can also throw a hell of a left up top, right? But in that fight, one of the stories was how Colazzo's lefts to Berto's body literally drained Berto, right? Berto had lost the stamina in the middle of that fight. Now that's a Luis Colazzo fight. Think of him like how you think of Mauricio Herrera, right? He can work you inside. He has technical skills, a excellent defense that makes it hard for you to hit him. But, Shane Mosley, dazzling hand speed, beat him, right? Andre Berto, 
at least officially, beat him. Boxing at times is a beauty contest. And when you see a guy throwing what looks to be the more explosive punches from distance, that guy's going to look more dramatic. That's going to register more with the judges. Now let's talk about Amir Khan. Right? You know Amir Khan. Simply put, his bad moments are legendary. Right down on the canvas, clueless against Breedis Prescott. Gets hit was unfortunate enough in that fight to have the referee wearing a camera. Right? We <laughs> we actually have incredible video of the Danny Garcia Mircon fight. What was said by I believe it was Kenny Bayless to him, how Khan reacted, right? When Khan's in a car crash. He's the guy who looks like he's been in the car crash, right? When you see his shortcomings, you wonder about them, right? Probably the biggest one, as I see it, is a lack of head movement, right? Khan's a little bit stiff up top, isn't he, right? He's a bit robotic. He's not a natural doesn't really roll with punches, right? He shouldn't be confused with Floyd Mayweather because he's not a guy who intuitively has feel in the ring. He looks like a guy who needs to be given a blueprint, right? Also, Khan's not the best inside. Look at the start to his fight against Lamont Peterson. In fact, you know, look at the start of his fight against Danny Garcia. But the Peterson fight's really striking because as you see the start, you're thinking to yourself, hmm, Khan has power. Khan has the hand speed. This guy just can't deal with Khan outside. So how could go, you know, how could anything go wrong here? And then of course Khan gets bullied inside for much of that fight. Now that fight's controversial. Right, the scoring of that fight is very controversial. But what's not controversial is the fact that Khan gets backed up in that fight. And he looks bad at times. But, and this is the but, right? When Amir Khan is right, he literally gives you jaw dropping moments. Moments where you're watching a fight and something happens and you go, oh! Right? As I said before, Bond's not Jason Bourne. Excuse me. Khan is not Jason Bourne. He's more James Bond. Right? Let's talk about some of Khan's jaw-dropping moments. Right? Moments that can only happen when you have his gifts. When he's on, he's an offensive juggernaut. The hand speed is such that when he fought Zab Judah, right, Judah looked average in terms of hand speed. Right, Khan's hand speed seemed to be just one notch above has Zab Judah ever looked more outclassed in the ring I know he looked awfully bad at the end of the Costa Zoo fight right where he got knocked out but before that knockout Judah looked like he was very much in that fight did he look to you like he was in the fight against Samir Khan looked to me like he was completely overwhelmed. And it was really striking. Judah came in the ring with Pernell Whitaker, a great defensive master. I have to tell you, as I was watching Judah get deconstructed, 
I started thinking to myself, hey, the wrong guy came out of Judah's corner to fight Khan. Right? Khan was on his game to the point where I thought, look, forget Judah. You need Pernell Whitaker in the ring to at least make this competitive. Right? Let me just point out, too. And I know what I'm going to say is going to sound controversial. It looked to me like at the end of that fight, Judah was so overwhelmed. Now, keep in mind, this is a guy who, you know, went the distance with Floyd Mayweather. Right? Went the distance with Danny Garcia. Was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with prime Miguel Cotto for several rounds. In fact, I would argue that were it not for the low blows, Judah may well have had the upper hand in that fight. Right? This is a guy who went to St. Louis and beat Corey Spinks when Corey Spinks was on top of the world. I encourage everyone to look at that fight film, right? You're talking about a fight where St. Louis is there. Nelly leads Corey Spinks into the ring, right? It looked like Judah didn't have three fans in the audience. And then he went to work against a technician, right? I believe Judah is an elite fighter who belongs in the Hall of Fame, quite frankly. Look closely at his record. He didn't look like a Hall of Famer against American. Right, the end of the fight, I thought Judah did some acting, one man's opinion, not a statement of fact, right, to try to make it look like he got hit with an illegal shot. I thought that was because he didn't want to deal with Khan another minute of that fight. That's how good Khan looked. You want to know another great Khan moment? Has Marcus Madonna ever looked worse? than he did when he gets hit by a body shot that's so devastating that Madonna has a delayed reaction and then hits the canvas. What's interesting in the early rounds of that Madonna fight, and I understand that's a tale of two fights, is just how dazzling Amir Khan's hand speed is. And it's not just random hand speed. This is a guy putting together combinations to the point where he could just lean in and drop a shot to the body. I believe it's a left hand to the body. Right? That's one of the best body shots I've ever seen. Right? As I was watching that fight, when I saw Maidana hit the canvas, I thought, whoa! You know, it felt like I was watching a Usain Bolt race. Right? Let me, let me mention another Amir Khan fight. One of the best talkers in the sport is Paulie Malinashi. Right? Malinashi will tell you when he feels he's been robbed. Malinashi will tell you when he feels an opponent was overrated. Malinashi has the gift of gab. He breaks down fights. He's an excellent analyst on Showtime. Right? Malinaji will tell you that the fight against Ricky Hatton should not have been stopped by his corner, and I agree with him. Apparently, the bad blood has persisted between James Buddy McGirt and Paulie Malinaji. But let me say this. Even Malinaji, who believes he should have gotten the nod against Adrian Broner, even Malinaji understands that he lost his fight to Amir Khan. Right? I doubt there are too many members of Malinaji's corner who were upset when that fight got stopped. Malinaji, a craftsman. Right? A guy who went to Russia and brought home the title. Right? A guy who has one of the best jabs in boxing and who is a showman. Was completely worked over by Amir Khan. Right? Khan looked faster. Khan didn't even go in for the kill. Operated off a jab. Looked great doing so. That fight reached the point where in the later rounds you were thinking to yourself, Is Paulie, a guy with a great chin, 
going to last the distance. And he didn't. Right, so when Khan is top shelf, he's very top shelf. The way I see this fight, I think the odds are crazy. I think this is a fight that's competitive. I don't believe if these guys fought five times, Khan wins four of the five. Right, to me, the four to one doesn't make sense. But, styles make fights. I'm expecting Amir Khan to win this fight. Right? I believe Khan from distance. If he can keep the fight on the outside and operate behind a jab. In other words, if he can fight the same fight that he fought against Katelnik way back when. Look up the video of that fight. I believe he beats Colazzo who needs to be in the pocket to be his best, right? Colazzo dispatched Victor Ortiz because Ortiz was too close to him and was too reckless defensively, right? What Amir Khan needs to do is to stay from distance behind an excellent jab, use his foot speed, which is exemplary, and spend the fight circling Colazzo. He can't make the mistake that Andre Berto made of actually trying to engage him up close. Colazzo is simply too skilled. View Colazzo as a poor man's Roberto Duran. Right? Let me just say too to the Duran fans. I know they're going to say to me, what about the Duran Barkley fight? I'll agree Duran could move around the ring when he wanted to. Right? But younger Duran didn't have the foot speed of the Ray Leonard's of the world, right? So, of course, you have the Duran-Ray Leonard rematch. Here, what Amir Khan needs to do is to realize that he has the foot speed advantage and the hand speed advantage in this fight. He also needs to be honest with himself and realize that whatever he's learned from his new trainer, he's not going to have the inside game of Luis Colazzo. Right, Colazzo, that's his bread and butter. In my opinion, Khan needs to stay out of the pocket. I believe he does. I believe Colazzo is too good defensively to get stopped early. I like the over in this fight. I usually don't like over-unders. But I believe this fight's going to go several rounds. I also believe Khan's going to win the fight, but I don't like the 4-1 to one odds. So the play I'm recommending here is to take the over, right? Just like the Danny Garcia, Mauricio Herrera fight went over, I'm expecting this fight to go over, right? You'll get better odds than the minus 400 currently being offered by the casino on Amir Khan. As I said before, both of these guys have been champions. Both of these guys are highly skilled. But if Amir Khan could fight a mobile young Ali fight, right, if he can move around the ring, Ali Cleveland Williams, right, if he can move around the ring and not get close to Luis Colazzo, he should be able to bank enough rounds to have his hand raised at the end of it. But if Colazzo is able to duplicate what Lamont Peterson did to Khan, right? If he's able to track Khan down and have his back up against the ropes, and keep in mind, Khan was with a different trainer when that happened, then Colazzo has a chance. I just wonder how Colazzo is going to be able to close the distance between himself and and Amir Khan, who really is gifted in terms of hand speed, coordination, and accuracy. I expect Khan to win. The recommended betting play is the over. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And don't get me wrong. Right? I know Khan at times has been reckless. He couldn't have fought a worse third round 
against Danny Garcia. I'll agree with that. Right? But, as bad as that performance was, as bad as the Breeders Prescott performance was, if you're going to lose to Prescott, isn't that the way to lose to Prescott? Think about it. Compare and contrast Khan against Prescott with Miguel Vasquez against Prescott. Right? Both Khan and Vasquez have great jabs. Vasquez, though, intuitively knew how to use his. Right? Khan didn't. Right, I'll agree, Khan on a bad day is a guy having a bad day. But when Khan's right, when you see guys like Madonna hit the canvas early in fights, when you see Zab Judah practically waving a surrender flag, when you see Pauli Malinashi unable to do anything, right? then you know the talent level we're talking about when he's right. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.